Welcome to Nasha's Art. Before we have a go drawing our medieval knight, we are going to look at this medieval piece of artwork that shows this crazy battle where Normans and English fought tooth and nail for the crown of England. This is the incredible Bayo tapestry that depicts the Battle of Hastings. Here we have William the Conqueror, then Duke of Normandy, who believes it's he who should be King of England and not Harold Goodwin, who currently holds the throne. Here we see William Duke in Magno Navigio. In a great ship, he crossed the sea and in those ships he packed all his best soldiers, between 4,000 and 7,000 of them, with horses. You can see a horse just there and more horses and his shields and swords and best armour and they sailed across the seas until they landed at Hastings where they built their first encampment, ate their first meal and barbecued their first meat. Here they are sitting enjoying a feast on British or English soil and here we have William probably planning his battle plans against Harold. As they prepare their swords and shields and armour, they build the first Motton Bailey castle. Here's the keep and all the soldiers building the mott and the castle and the palisade and the bailey with all the houses in to keep the soldiers safe. And as time passes, a few days pass, Harold, who's just already battled Another battle against another guy who wants to become King of England and he's won that battle at Stamford Bridge forces all his soldiers to march down to face these Norman invaders and we have the Normans on horseback and we have the English soldiers standing with no horses. They cover themselves, protecting themselves with their shields and they create formations that mean that the Norman spears can't get through easily. You can see deadly arrows flying across into the Normans from the British archers. Here we have a British archer right there. And the battle commences with deadly vigour. You can see men dying underneath and being trodden on by horses. And eventually the British have a battle plan. They find a great hill and Harold organises all his men in a formation to protect themselves atop the hill where they can see down on the Normans and they have the vantage point of being able to throw arrows down at the Normans who are tired of riding up the hill. But unfortunately, a rumour starts among the English soldiers that William the Conqueror is dead and in their overexcitement and zealousness they rush, half of them rush down the hill, leaving an opening in the British, in the English soldiers' formation. With a few more hours of battle, there's not long to go before terrible things happen to King Harold. Here we see him, Harold, Rex, King, Interfectus Est, is dead because he has a deadly arrow right in the eye, killing him. Some say it wasn't an arrow, some say it was the stab of a sword. But either way, the British soldiers, the English soldiers, flee as their leader is destroyed and William the Conqueror becomes King of England. I'm going to start by drawing the shield, the knight's shield, in the middle of the paper and it's facing at an angle. You might be able to see my guidelines here that I've done for myself and that might help you as well. So let's start with a curved line for the top of the shield. And then two curved lines coming in. Okay. 
We're going to now double that up because the shields usually had a border. We're next going to draw the shoulders, arms, head and sword of our knight. And as we go through, I'll talk a little bit about what we're drawing. So, behind this shield is his chest and neck, which is covered with a tunic and chain mail. So, let's get his shoulders in first. I'm going to go from the top of the shield here and curve over and stop. This is going to be this arm that is holding the shield, but most of the arm is behind. Go to the top of the shield again, just by the corner, and curve out. Now go to the end of that curve and do a long line down. This is the rest of his arm. We're going to do over his elbow a kind of the, the end of one piece of tunic that he's wearing and a circle shape which is a bit of armour that's protecting his elbow. You can see that shape there. And then finish off his arm just inside, not at the end, just inside, curved down. You can see that comes to about the middle of the shield. So there's his arm behind. Go back up to the top of the shoulder, do a little curve over, under, over, just little. I think it's better if we get his helmet in now. The bottom of his helmet and the top of the shield, the top of the middle of the shield, there's a gap, okay? So it's really important that you leave that gap. So I'm going to go to the almost the middle of the shield and I'm going to go up a bit. This is going to be the point for the very front of his helmet, the like chin bit. So let's curve up now to meet that neck bit. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Curve up. Let's double that line while we're there. Okay, that's the bottom of his helmet. Now the helmet comes out over and out, like a bell shape, slightly. So, curve out and in, up. I'm going to do a little round bump, just a little one. And then I'm going to curve round again to the top of the helmet. Here, curve in, up, little bump, and curve down from the top of the helmet. Okay. Let's get some details on the helmet. So I'm going to draw a line coming down like this. So you understand that the middle pointy bit of the helmet is curved like that, but I'm not going to draw any more line. But that might help you understand that it's, his head is slightly at an angle. Okay, let's do a pattern at the top of the helmet like this. Different armies often had different designs so that they would know their soldiers on the battlefield and they could tell them apart from the enemy. So we'll do that as well. There's another piece of metal that comes here. So we'll draw that double line there and on the other side. There. Now for the eyepiece so that they can see out. 
So it's like a hole that's cut for the night to see out. And then there are little holes that are like breathing holes. So let's get those in. There's a pattern on the side of the helmet, probably where there's another piece of metal. In those days, everything was handmade, so all the pieces of metal came together to create one piece, one helmet. Okay, let's go to the other side of the helmet and just in a bit. We're going to do a couple of curved lines. That's where the chain mail on his neck that protects his neck from arrows is kind of curving. I'm going to do a line in to show it's curving more. It's where it's folding. Chain mail is a bit like fabric, but yet it's made of metal um, and it protects them from arrows. So I'm doing curves now to show the chain mail and how it's folding. Okay. And it curved at the very bottom like that. So there was no gaps between the clothes and the, cha and the chain mail. Otherwise the arrows could get in and, and hurt the knight. All right, we're gonna get the other side of the tunic. So there's a bit of tunic here. And we're gonna get the other side there and then the arm with its armor. So go back up to the top of the shoulder. That's this side of the helmet here. Do a little curved line and come down around the chain mail and follow that line and double it up like this. That's all hiding behind the shield so we don't need to worry about the rest of it. Now for the shoulder itself. This comes all the way down to almost the end of the shield but you can see it's slightly in and double that up as well. Just behind the shield, there's a little bit of the symbols that this knight wears. There are special colors of his army. So again, his army can recognize him as being one of theirs and not kill him. All right, let's do the arm and it's coming up like that. So go to the top, not right on top of the shoulder, a little bit round and do slightly wiggly line and then come straight to about there. It's a little bit out and then come down a bit, just a little bit above the shield, wiggly line and come out. And we're gonna now join that with a curved line. So this is like that on the other side. Okay, we're gonna curve round now for the elbow and arm. So let's do a short line there, a very short line there, and you're gonna curve round because there's another piece of armor that he's wearing, like this. The circle bit is on the other side, so we don't need to draw that. Okay, we're gonna get thinner now because this part of the arm is covered with leather to protect it. And let's do a kind of buckle like this. And the other side of the buckle, there we are. Okay, we're now going to do what's called a gauntlet. That's like our lower arm and hand armor. So go back up behind the buckle and we're gonna curve round. We're now gonna come in a bit and then form the hand. So let's come in, stop, other side, in. And now for the hand. First thing we'll do is form the thumb. 
So from the end of here, I'm going to curve round, curve round the top of the thumb and then down for the thumb part that's by the palm. On the other side, we're going to go to the end of the gauntlet and curve up and stop there. Do a curve in for the bottom of the palm and let's get those fingers in. So from the thumb, we're going to curve up and then down and round the first finger. These would have been covered with armour, we can always draw that on after. Let's do the second finger, curving next to but longer than the first one. And the, and the fourth finger, next to but shorter than the middle one. The little finger is hiding, so we'll leave that, but we are going to do the top of the hand now. We'll curve that over like this. Let's get the, th the sword in now. So we're going to start with a circle just next to the thumb and then a larger circle surrounding it because swords in those days were very beautifully made, handcrafted and often had decoration on them. So we'll turn that into decoration. Now for the handle bit of the sword. Same opposite, but we'll do a little curved line to make it 3D. And let's get the blade of the sword now carefully in. We want to make sure it's above his head. And let's get it nice and long. Swords in those days were really heavy and very long. And we'll put a line down the middle as well, almost to the end. Now we need the end of the sword, which is also slightly decorated. The two lines coming out, a curve round and a curve round. Try and make them the same. and a little sort of point at the end. And again, we can always come back and decorate it more. Let's get the knight's tunic and chain mail in. So we're gonna follow this line as if it's going through the shield, but it's actually going behind. So let's come in for a waist and let's do a belt. Just a bit of a belt that we can see, probably leather, off of which the knight may have hung different things that he needed to keep with him. Okay, now for the tunic, the rest of it. I'm gonna to go to the pointy bit of the shield and just a bit in. Come down for the tunic. One side of the tunic and now for the other side. Leave a little gap, come down across and back up to the bottom of the belt. Double that now. And on the other side. Now the bottom of the chain mail, which would have been worn underneath the tunic to protect the knight from flying arrows, swords, etc. Now we'll do the top of his legs and his knee guards. So from the bottom right hand side of the chain mail, we want to curve a bit out to show muscles. I'm going to get the knee guards in. So a little curve, big curve for the knee. And we're going to come in like that. Each one you're going to come in to meet that knee bit and let's do some bolts where the armour was attached. Knights seem to wear this little, maybe it's a protective part here and then let's draw the back of the leg with the muscle and another bolt and then the beginning of the calf. 
protection there. Let's do the other leg, inside first, little protective bit, calf armour, just the beginning of it, other side, and now this side of the leg, thigh, curved line for the knee, curved line in for the knee armour with the, the bolt there, and the other bolt, and let's do these areas here for the knees and the thighs, and we can do a bolt and a bolt there. All right, there's our knight. The last thing you can do, and this I'll leave up to you, is to decorate the knight's shield. You could use a lion or a dragon. Those were often creatures that symbolized power, but again, it's up to you. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you want to see some more of my artwork, check out Nash Henkel Art on Insta.